we're going to come to the uh, Suella speech in a moment, but let's just talk about what's going to happen at this conference. Is it oh. correct that you are amongst those who are going to refuse to vote for any government uh, that does not reduce taxes? Well, so it's not just any government, it's actually policies that will increase taxes. That's really important. And I see you've just had a conversation with my former colleague, my Cabinet colleague, Michael Gove, about this. And tax is important as an issue. This is our last conference before a general election. And quite frankly, it's one of those issues that also differentiates us between the Labour Party. We're pro-enterprise, pro-economic growth, pro-letting hard-working people keep more of their money. So I'll be speaking at the growth rally tomorrow, I'm actually speaking at other forums as yeah. well, where I will absolutely be saying that we must stand up for conservative values and beliefs. This is the time to do it. And also, Trevor, you'll know no, this. Sir. I mean, look, look at where we're sitting right now. This hall is full of, you know, lots of stands, exhibitions, but party conference has always been about our members, party members that go out in a general election campaign, want to talk about no. conservative values and beliefs and do all the hard work. Well, let's, let's, let's sit, talk about what that means concretely. Are you with Michael Gove in his suggestion that you need to bring down taxes before the next election and that the taxes you need to target are taxes on work. I'm thinking natural insurance. I am thinking income tax. Well, employment, absolutely, in the sense that at the end of the day, Trevor, people must be able to feel better off under the Conservatives. And that means they've got to have more money in their pockets. And we're speaking right now at a time when clearly inflation is a very significant problem, but also there's a cost of living issue in the country as well. So things are tight, you know, times are difficult. Right. And we have to be champions of hardworking people across the country that, quite frankly, are finding life difficult right now. Look at, you know, actually, to be fair... Yeah, but let, but let, let's just get uh, concrete about... When he says, let's talk about taxes on work. Mm. Do you want income tax down before you go to the country in a year's time? Of course I'd like to see taxes come down, income okay. tax in particular. We've got to be realistic about this, though, Trevor, as well. I mean, here we are in October. There'll be a fiscal cycle that comes up. I think Michael, Michael Gove mentioned this as well. Obviously, this is all decisions for the Chancellor. The Chancellor himself... Jeremy Hunt has already spoken and said that he would like to see taxes come down, but obviously that is for him. Now, you yeah, know but, a fiscal but, cycle but, but as well as I But he says it in a way that says, actually, it's not going to happen. Unless but, uh, it's, um, if there's a choice to be made, it won't be in favour of tax but cuts. But, Trevor, the other, let's be realistic as well. The other point to make, it is now October. There'll be fiscal events that come up. The public, for them to feel an absolute tangible change and difference, we've got to work on this sooner. And I think what is quite interesting around conference, and you'll see this over the next few days, many of my colleagues feel exactly the same. That's the differentiation between us and Labour. We believe in supporting enterprise, supporting hard work, okay. empowering people. And, of course, part, it's inevitable these discussions are going to come up at party conference. We believe in, um, uh, in supporting hard work. One way in which people think about supporting hard work hard work, is being able to store up their wealth and pass it on to their children. Yes. Where are you on inheritance tax? Well, I think it needs reforming. Quite frankly, I'd rather see it go. And I've said that many, many times. So would you yeah. like the Chancellor in whatever, whichever fiscal Trevor, event chooses Trevor, the to say... Is yes, I would. <laughs> goodbye Absolutely. to inheritance tax. I would. It is a regressive and a punitive tax. And I see this, actually, as a Member of Parliament and... I'm sure you've met many individuals over a number of years. You see that they've, you know, we believe in supporting people, buying assets, owning their home, a property-owning democracy, all these core values. And then when they see the amount of tax they then have to pay on it or how difficult it is to leave behind their hard-earned assets to their family, I think it's right that we stand up for them. So... It's, that, that is not a walk in the park, though, Trevor, honestly. I mean, these are difficult areas of taxation, and I would like to see that work on reform start sooner well, rather than later. Well, this is very, this is very interesting, because what you've already told me, let's, let's cut some taxes on work, income tax, let's get rid of inheritance tax. Um, there is a reason why uh, the tax burden has climbed to nearly 38%. If you get rid of these taxes, something is going to have to go. So what are you going to cut in terms of public spending to pay for those tax cuts? And that's right. Choices will have to be made. 
Let's not forget the size of the state has exponentially grown. I'm sure you looked at that IFS report that came out on Friday, which clearly stated we have a 70-year high tax burden. The size of the state, the amount of GDP that is going on the state is actually outstripping our economic growth. But we're so talking, that when you say the size of the state, uh, let's not make this abstract. What we're talking about is pensions. We're talking about health. We're talking about education. OK, there's we're three. Not just talking which, about which, which, which of those is going to go? Uh, you're wrong. You're, we're not just speaking about those three, not just on specifics, but more broadly, if you look at the size of the state, that actually means unelected decision making bodies, for example. Look at projects that are being, you know, where like the costs what? of them. HS2? HS2 is a very good example. Why is it that HS2, the costs are going up and up and up, when actually the cost of HS1, HS1 was delivered not just on time but under budget? Well, you just asked, you just asked a question. I, I, I'm looking for an answer. What uh, is going to pay for these tax cuts? Let, let me give you an... Well, let, let's test them out. Get rid of HS2. You, you, you don't want to complete it. Well, I'm not saying that at all. I think we need supply-side reforms and more infrastructure investment. The reality is, Trev... Look, when you look, I've worked but in you, Whitehall. You, you, you no, can't no, have no, it both no. ways. You, you can't have both. You, can, you, you can constantly attack case. Labour on this grounds. You can't have it both ways. You can't have tax cuts and then also yes, we can. the same, the same level sorry, of spending. I'm sorry, but we can. And it has been done in the past before. Even if you go back to the 1980s when there was high inflation and high unemployment, it was the policies of supply-side economic reform that brought inflation down, created jobs in our country and created economic growth that ranged from 3 4 and 5% okay. over a decade. So it is possible. And that does mean, yes, hard choices. And actually, the one thing I would say, Trevor, to you is, or credit to Rishi Sunak, he's speaking about long-term decisions and making hard choices. These are the type of hard choices that have to be made in the long run to give us the type of economic security that the British people want to see. Um, let me put it as gently as I can. There will be intelligent people out there watching this interview, and what they will be saying is, I think I've heard this message before. And I think I've heard it from somebody called Liz Truss. You can have tax cuts, you can reduce the levels of income tax, but you can also have all that you want on public spending. You can have as much health care as you want, you can have all the education, and actually it'll be fantastic. Actually, I'm not, I'm not sure. I wasn't in Liz Truss's government, so I'm, I'm not going to well, boil it down. I, I was listening to it, that's and very, so was the well, rest of the country. that's very good, but I'm also saying that we have in the past... I've given you a very good example in the 1980s of high rates of inflation, high rates of unemployment, supply-side supply reforms that actually brought around the it, economic change that we need. It, it, and the reality is right now, Trevor... I mean, I'm sure you've read that report on Friday from the IFS. I have. The size of the state... By the way, it isn't just about health and education. Right. I think the Conservative Party should be very proud of the fact that we we have something now like 41,000 more nurses in the NHS. You know, we don't hear people speaking about that very often. The whole okay. issue around schools and education, the way in which standards have been increased, that is down to good long-term investment. But on top of that, right. there is a hell of a lot of waste that goes on in government. And I'm sure if you speak to every single minister, okay. and you'll have many on your programme in the weeks to come, they could give you examples. Okay. I'll give you one example now. Last year, I gave the police a pay increase, and I did that okay. from Home Office budget. So there are ways in which these... Me these are Outcomes OK, we, 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 can have a, we could have a, a, a seminar about the difference between 1980, early 1980s and, and now, but I want to talk to you about something which I think you're better qualified than most to discuss. So Ella Braverman said in Washington last week that multiculturalism had failed. In what way was that helpful to Rishi Sunak? Well, I think you'll have to ask her and ask Rishi Sunak, to be honest. I mean, she's given a speech and... I think, actually, I, I did hear um, what your political um, reporter said earlier on, Sam Coates. To me, this is very much, you know, making interventions, statements. But actually, Trevor, I think we have to be realistic here, that those are no sub that's not, not a substitute for delivery around, you know, changes to policy in government. Oh. Now, I don't know what the intention was around that. It might just be to get attention, to have the dividing lines that, you know, your previous commentators were mentioning as we go into a run-up to a general election. Now, I can understand that. I can absolutely understand that. But you and I are sitting here today, OK, we are the products of actual integration, multiculturalism, dynamic communities, people that love our country, want to contribute to our country, along with a hell of a lot of other people that have done exactly the same. And I think that's something we should be proud of in our country. I, I'm, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but I, what I'm hearing is, um, before you sound off on the theoretical 
and cultural issues, wouldn't it be a good idea if you stopped some boats and brought down the numbers of immigration? Would that be a completely unfair interpretation? Well, you've, you are trying to put words into my mouth, Trevor, and that's all well and good. The government has made, I think actually even on, in this hall, we've seen a stop the boats message. The government has been clear, Rishi Sunak, his Home Secretary, have been clear that that is their priority. This side of a general election, if I may politely suggest, it is about delivery and the government will be judged on delivery. When you make pledges, statements and promises, you have to deliver. But of course, pledges are no substitute for action. And I think the public, they're sick about hearing about some of these issues and the failure to deliver. And I think it's right that everyone puts shoulder to the wheel and cracks on and does w the work. W would a little silence from Suella be welcome? Um, look. Home secretaries of the day rightly should be speaking about a range of issues in their portfolio. Um, but I, I have to say, and I say this for everyone, actually, and, you know, I saw Michael Gove earlier on the programme as well. I've been in that job. Being Home Secretary is a very difficult job. It's multifaceted in many ways. You are juggling many difficult issues, ranging from the security of our country to support for our brilliant police. You know, I think, I think the public want delivery now. They really do. All right, look, I mean... I take what you said a moment ago, you know, as you say, here you are, a daughter of uh, Ugandan refugees, you went through comprehensive school, uh, you're now a dame and you've been Home Secretary, all of that. Uh, you know, and I, uh, you, you rightly point out, I've got a sort of shadowy small version of that in, in my own life. Very successful, life. Trevor. But let me uh, put to you what I think might be in the current Home Secretary's mind. Um, I put it to Michael Gove earlier on that the Bradford Council had produced mm. this report showing that the chances of interaction between uh, Asian people in Bradford and the majority population had de actually declined over yes. the last decade. Um, now, isn't it reasonable for her to sound the alarm about something like that. I've got no issue with that at all, but put some perspective and context around it. I think that's very important. You know, if there'd been an example of Bradford, for example, and perhaps even Leicester last year, I remember what happened in Leicester. Where there was there, a conflict between right. Hindu, uh, Hindu people in Bradford and, and Muslim people in Bradford. But what I would say, because I do, Leicester, I, I, know, I know the community reasonably well up there as well, and there are some other wider issues around employment, social issues. People, they want to work. People want to work and they want to contribute and integrate. So I think context matters a great deal. And I've, I've seen programmes around the country, I've sat with councils around the country, where it's pretty obvious that there are communities that have not integrated. We don't want that. That is not right. And I think it is important to give voice to that. But you cannot generalise, and I think context is important. And then just to add to that point as well, you know, I think we're here in Manchester. One of the most successful resettled communities in Manchester are actually, particularly in recent years, are the Hong Kongers, the BNOs yep. that have come over. You know, they're educated, highly articulate, they are contributing. I've visited some, you know, I've met many in my tenure as Home Secretary. We cannot ultimately but say that, it, you know, across it, the board, people are not... But, but there are different ways in which you, people do, do this. I mean... One of the things that I remember from the days when I was um, close to this kind of issue was that here in Manchester, an interesting thing is that some communities cluster, but the, that Chinese community di uh, is right. distributed across the yes. city. I think that the story was that there were no more than six Chinese children in any school. Yes. Uh, so they, there are different ways. And government can make it easier for people to do it, as it were, the Chinese way. I think and, now, and yes, other Trevor, ways. You, you may appreciate the point that I'm about to make, is that historically that has been much harder. 1960s, 1970s, for example, mm. when communities that were new to the United Kingdom did not have support structures around them. So naturally they came together um, okay. and lived in that way. Now it is very different. And the other point to okay. make is that a lot of local councils do a lot more in integration. I mean, I saw this with Syrian refugees, BNOs, the Ukraine scheme. You know, integration is paramount. So I think it's important to give voice to these issues. Of course it is. But again, always have the right kind of context around them. Um, just, 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 just very quickly, um, something that surprised me that uh, I, I heard that you had said, which is that you read, you said that an article which had called Britain lawless 
And you described that article as spot on. Do you really believe that? No, not in the sense of Britain being lawless. There are very legitimate issues, I, and I know the article you're referring to, no. around knife crime. We saw that senseless murder of that young 15-year-old girl last week. And that's just appalling and tragic and totally preventable. Okay. Now, there is something there around, and to be fair, I did a lot of work, Trevor, on knife crime, gang work, county lines, getting weapons off the streets, stop and search. Uh, these are important areas, and I think there is more that needs to be done there. Okay. Young people are losing their lives senselessly, and I'm sure that all parents and families and, you know, God bless that poor girl last week and her family, they are going through a terribly tragic and traumatic time, okay. and that could have been preventable. You can give me a quick yes or no to this. Uh, you're on platform with Liz Trust tomorrow. Mm. Could she come back as leader of the party? No. Thank you.